Today's Mass is offered for the souls in purgatory. We also pray and offer for souls who have no one to pray for. We pray for the souls of Samantha Lohui Chen, for Mrs. Charlotte, for Phyllis Chin Kui Lan, for Marilu Manabat, for Richard Victor, for Alfred Manjit, for Philip Lien Woon Choi and Judy Lee Po Ai, for Anthony Xiao Chin Hock and Elizabeth Ko So, for Michael Yan Wai Pin. Of special intentions for Victoria Lai Yin Fung by Victoria Lai. Blessings and thanksgiving by Ko Kit Kyong, Agnes Chong and family. Special intention and thanksgiving for Bagi Bhagavan Smart and family. Prayers for families in Melbourne, Australia and Philippines. Special intention for Cape Aden, for Noor Inda and families of Manabad and Mudong to stay safe and healthy from Calvin Manabad. Special intentions for Rita De Cruz for her spinal operation today to be successful and that she has a good recovery by Rachel. Offering thanksgiving for God's blessings, guidance and mercy for Adeline and Angeline by Molly and Go. Offering thanksgiving for Quirino Manabat Jr. from Calvin Manabat. You should pray for those who are suffering during this pandemic or those who are going through a difficult time, uncertainty of job, domestic problems and various other issues that people go through, that they may receive God's blessings and grace through our generosity. We shall pray for our own personal intentions. Give peace, O Lord, to those who wait for you, that your prophets be found true. Hear the prayers of your servant and of your people, Israel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear friends, today in the Gospel, Jesus invites us to move from our pride to humility, from sinfulness to hopefulness. And so for times that we have allowed our pride to take control of our lives, for times that we have been so free in judging others, for times that we have not gone into self-reflection of who God is in our lives. For this and for the sins that we have committed, let us be truly sorry for our sins, acknowledging them, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to the Father and to one another. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You heal the wounds of our sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us with the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, the gospel that you received and in which you are firmly established, because the gospel will save you only if you keep believing exactly what I preached to you. Believing anything else will not lead to anything 
Well then, in the first place, I taught you what I had been taught myself, namely that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that He was buried and that He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, that He appeared first to Cephas and secondly to the Twelve. Next, He appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still alive, although some have died. Then he appeared to James, and then to all the apostles. And last of all, he appeared to me too. It was as though I was born, when no one expected it. I am the least of the apostles. In fact, since I persecuted the Church of God, I hardly deserve the name Apostle. But by God's grace, that is what I am, and the grace that He gave me has not been fruitless. On the contrary, I, or rather the grace of God that is with me, have worked harder than any of the others, but what matters is that I preach what they preach, and this is what you all believe. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His love has no end. Let the sons of Israel say, His love has no end. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. The Lord's right hand has triumphed. His right hand raised me up. I shall not die, I shall live and recount His deeds. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. You are my God, I thank you. My God, I praise you. I will thank you, for you have given answer, and you are my Saviour. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. God in Christ was reconciling the world to himself, and he has entrusted to us the news that they are reconciled. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. One of the Pharisees invited Jesus to a meal when he arrived at the Pharisee's house and took his place at table. A woman came in who had a bad name in the town. She had heard he was dining with the Pharisee and had brought with her an alabaster jar of ointment. She waited behind him at his feet weeping, and her tears fell on his feet, and she wiped them away with, the, with her hair. Then she covered his feet with kisses and anointed them with the ointment. When the Pharisees who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who this woman is that is touching him, and what a bad name she has. Then Jesus took him up and said, Simon, I have something to say to you. Speak. Master, was the reply. There was once a creditor who had two men in his debt. One owed him 500 denarii, the other 50. They were unable to pay, so he pardoned them both. Which of them will love him more? The one who had was pardoned more, I suppose, answered Simon. Jesus said, You are right. Then he turned to the woman. Simon, he said, you see this woman, I came into your house and you poured no water over my feet, but she has poured out her tears over my feet and wiped them away with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but she has been covering my feet with kisses ever since I came in. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. 
For this reason, I tell you, that her sins, her many sins, must have been forgiven her, or she would not have shown such great love. It is the man who is forgiven little who shows little love. Then he said to her, Your sins are forgiven. Those who were with him at the table began to say to themselves, Who is this man that he even forgives sins? But he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Simon the Pharisee has an apparent openness to the Lord. He invites him to dine, he observes him, and he engages him in cordial dialogue. But nonetheless, we see that Simon interiorly judges the Lord, dismisses him as a farce, and ultimately rejects him. The pharisaical attitude consists essentially in trying to force God into our own preconceived notions of how he should operate. The Pharisees had the correct view of moral precepts. Both Simon and Jesus agree that this woman is a sinner, but they fail in recognizing their own sins which are rooted in pride. And this pride manifested itself in that unspoken attitude that God must adjust himself to our way of being and acting. And so the Pharisee thinks he is sinless and does not admit that he needs a saviour. His prideful attitude of assessing the Lord proceeds from a deeper pride that blinds him to who he really is before God, a simple creature in need of divine help and grace. So Simon wants God to conform to his preconceptions and winds up rejecting Christ. This is the paradigm of pride. It distorts reality and forgets its own self-centered world that Christ cannot penetrate. The woman knows she is a sinner and recognizes the path of, to her salvation in the words and example of Jesus. She painfully realizes who she is and keenly longs for salvation. The words and example of mercy of Christ resonate deeply in her heart and invite her to repentance. And this is the paradigm of humility. Its strength lies in the knowledge and serene acceptance of the truth and makes redemption possible. And so our Lord's loving treatment of both the woman and Simon displays a remarkable balance of kindness. He carefully avoids the opposite extremes of condemnation and indifference to others' sins. And the reason our Lord is able to offer hope and consolation to the repentant sinner as well as to invite the proud with a gentle call to repentance is that Christ will die for both. And in this, we see Christ's goodness. He comes to save us all, but we must choose to accept His goodness. And so as we celebrate this Eucharist, let us pray and ask for the grace to realize who we are and who God is in our lives. Let us pray for that grace that we may grow in gratitude of the goodness of God in our life and hope in His mercy to recognize the pride and strive to overcome it so that we will be filled in our lives with goodness of God. Let us grow in humility to open to our interior growth. We pray for this grace during this Mass. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, and that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you. As without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cherries of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Sebastian, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, we Saints Faustina and John Paul II, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. As we pray the Lord's Prayer, we pray that may grow in humility as we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. This is Jesus who invites us to dedicate our lives to him in humility. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. How precious is your mercy, O God! The children of men seek shelter in the shadow of your wings.
Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. We pray the prayer for all. God, God our, our merciful Father, Father source, source of, of healing, healing cast, cast the light of health and well-being on, on those who have been exposed to coronavirus, those who have contracted the disease. disease. Bless, Bless them, protect, protect them, them, and bring them speedily to full recovery. recovery. God of wisdom, bless medical scientists and researchers around the world with insight and skill, dedication and fortitude, that their work yields knowledge and understanding, speedily finding a vaccine, treatments and deterrence to its spread. Source of life, grant public health and government officials the strength to act swiftly and decisively with compassion and understanding in service to humankind, fighting this outbreak threatening the lives of our brothers and sisters, nations and communities, young and old. God of the present moment, bring hope and courage to all who wait or work in uncertainty. Bring hope that you will make them the equal of whatever lies ahead. We pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus, through the intercession of our blessed Mother Mary. Amen. Have a blessed day. Same to you, Father.